Hello, Dream Team, and a very warm welcome to you to another episode of The Good, The Bad, and The Rugby in partnership with City Index, the leading provider of spread betting, CFD, and FX trading, though I hope they won't mind this week when we say we could well be sponsored by Aspirin <laughs> because we have two very well-celebrated gentlemen <coughs> joining us on the pod uh, this time around. Tins is here. Are you ready? You know when you feel so excited that you're not going to be the only one that's feeling hungover and, <laughs> and having to carry themselves. Yeah, I'm back to introduce to how I felt through most of the tour actually. Yeah. So uh, I'm quite looking forward to hearing what went on. We'll give them our number for our, our friends at dialysis.co.uk. <laughs> Would you like to introduce them because they're all warlords and old friends of yours, and it's it's very good to have them on. Yeah, I, obviously first up is a man who should be well retired by now, but actually <laughs> has won more premierships than any. Premiership, he's won more Premiership finals than any club singly, yeah, right? The Ryan Giggs the Ryan, of Premiership Ryan rugby. Ryan Giggs is about to tip the scales at 40 years old. It's our best mate, the old mucker, Richard Wigglesworth. Welcome along. And then the social media sensation <laughs> that is, after getting the ball, knocked out of his hand against Toulouse in 2018, he's fully redeemed himself. <laughs> And his socials, by the way, over the last uh, 36 hours have been off the charts. Yeah. Freddie Burns. Welcome, well lads. How are we? Boys. Lively? Good. Dusty. I'm hanging, boys, but we, we, we carry Dusty. on, eh? We keep going. I love it. Freddie, toasting, <laughs> toasting on a Monday with a can of Thatchers. I'm going to come to you first of all, Freddie Burns. How are you feeling? Mate, I'd, I'd be honest with you, boys. I genuinely... I don't really know how I feel. Like, I'm buzzing. You've had, like... Two days on the source, and I'm I, I don't really get what's happened, boys. <laughs> and the best thing is, and I'm saying just before we come on, is everyone wants to know me again now, boys. You know what I mean? I've got to call up to this. <laughs> the phone's going last, off, everyone. It won't last. No, it, no, it won't, mate. It won't because I'll do something to muck it up like I always do. But um, no, mate, it's, it's been amazing, man, just to do it. And like, like I said, for me, speaking to the family and having a few beers with the boys yesterday and seeing what it means to to them is. Unbelievable, mate. So I'm on cloud nine. Well, you thoroughly deserve it. Right. As we say in these parts, ride the storms and celebrate those sunshines. And uh, the sun is shining at the moment, Fred. Wiggy, talk me through the fact that the young pup had to take you home at the weekend. Everyone's seen you asleep yeah. in a cab. No, he had, to, he had to drag me in a cab last night. He was, he was dying to go home. <laughs> um, so he just was chicken nuggets. All he wanted was chicken nuggets. I was running around, <laughs> chicken, get I was running around McDonald's at half two, stealing chicken nuggets because no one would buy me any. The queue was too big. <laughs> With the greatest respect, Richard, you sound like you've got one of those automated voice boxes that you press to your throat. <laughs> so, but there's I'd a lot of auto. Go on. Yeah, I'd love to tell you I'm shouting in the game, but um, it was probably just being excited on the beers afterwards. How, as an old man like you, does this one feel? Oh, this one felt special because of the team we were playing, um, how quickly um, Steve and the players have turned Leicester around. It felt special, but I think they've all been they've all been special, but this one was I don't know. No one had us down to win, did they? I, I don't know anyone who picked us to win, and I'm not surprised at that. But um, probably made it even sweeter. Okay. Yeah, we we all we all wanted. Yeah, but it was it's it's difficult. Nine years since Leicester's last title chase. Is that yeah, right? 2013. Right? 2013. Um, but led from week one to week. 24 so we what everyone wanted you to win but it's just Sarri's have that mentality of winning and I think I think even as the game went on I thought you were you know you should have been pulling further ahead you, t you turned down a couple of shots at goal which I thought you should have taken just to keep pushing the score on um but then when you think that Sarri's are coming into their zone whenever you need <laughs> Gaddafi to stand up and hit a droppy <laughs> <laughs> if only you could have had the um you know, you stepped up and did a job and I was so happy for the both of you. Obviously, we go back a long time, Freddie, since he was a young man and, and same with Wiggy, since we were both young men, which is a long, long time ago. And yeah. I was just, you know, the, the way you, both of you performed, obviously, how, Freddie, what was going through your mind when, you know, obviously, Fordy gets, uh, hopefully he's all right, gets that ankle ankle injury. Are you thinking immediately, yes, this is my, is the song, this is my moment, <laughs> going through your head or, or are you uh, looking behind you to see where the shit's dropped? Well, yeah, no, it was a bit of both, really. Um, like, first and foremost, I think Fordy, generally, like, we've had a rivalry all our careers, and it's like, people have liked to bill it that we don't like each other and all that sort of stuff, but what a bloke and what a pleasure it's been to see how he operates and, and sort of play alongside him 
this season. So first and foremost, you're gutted for him walking off, but then the main thing is, is that we then kick on and, and go and win it. Um, and to do that and send him off, obviously on his travels with uh, up to sale, but to send him off as a Premiership champion is no less than he deserves. So, mate, I absolutely bricked it, but at the same time, you know what, it's like you, these moments are there to be enjoyed and that's all I wanted to do. And I never saw it going the way it did. I didn't see us, I saw us winning the game. I didn't see it going down to the wire like it did or, or having the, the role that I played. Um, so to have done it for his like, oh, what a day. What a day. <laughs> it did, was it as badly hit droppy as it looked to in the ball flight or not? Yeah, mate, I literally, I, I reckon I would hit a better drop goal if I had a pair of steel cap boots on. <laughs> Does, like, does it count though does it it doesn't matter doesn't matter honest, honestly Tim the amount of times like you you practice drop goals and you're just spraying them left right and rhubarb mate and this one I literally hit it and it went out and it looked like a brown paper bag blown in the wind mate <laughs> but it, I mean, it was slap bang between the middle of the post and then like I said you'll see from my reaction like I genuinely didn't know what to do like I can't believe like, one's gone over can't believe one's yeah, gone exactly, over yeah. Hey, mate, if you just, you just got to keep swinging, boys. It's a bit like Pano with a box. Keep swinging. And hey, around. hey, you know I mean? careful. If you were here in studio, hey, I'd teach you a thing or two. Both are winners. <laughs> both are winners, though. Both, both are winners. I'll cleave it. They get the job done, Freddie. That's a very good life motto. Um, did hey, you... Wiggy, 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 I was saying, mate, I haven't been this drunk. I haven't been this drunk with you since we were on the piss at Cheltenham with Tinder. Cheltenham. Business, mate. No. That was another good night. <laughs> oh, very, I'm very glad your wife is, is is issuing some good training to some seasoned professionals. <laughs> if, it, if it hadn't been Lena's birthday, I'd have been on the, I'd have been meeting you somewhere. Yeah. I tell you. <laughs> um, tell me, just get, get, let's go into that to the reaction a little bit more. Richard, did you did you watch the, the moment unfold, or were you sitting head in hands on the bench? Um, no, I watched it, and then I just saw the clock. Everyone was going wild, and you were like, "No, no, stop." Uh, you just you it immediately what goes through your mind. Yeah. And then they, they start walking up to the kickoff and I'm stood with George and I just went, George, can you imagine Freddie Burns' Instagram in the next week? <laughs> <laughs> what well, st- still with twenty seconds on the clock, you mentioned Freddie yeah. Burns' Instagram. Yeah. I just just to try and um, relax us in the moment because I was just thinking, well, I can't believe what he's just done. Unbelievable. Um no, he was the man for the moment. Um everything happens for a reason. Uh, brilliant for him to step up and, and knock it over. And, and with you, old man, obviously stepping in, you know, Youngs, you being sat on the bench, was that purely tactical in terms of, I mean, the way you played on the weekend was, outstand, was outstanding and it, it just seemed that you knew everything that you were going to get off Saris and you'd you not only prepped yourself, but you prepped the lads. Is that, is Was that the purpose of why you started? It was because of that knowledge, because, you know, you know how to give it back to them as much as they give it out or...? Maybe Steve uh, definitely picks tactically. Uh, I'm not involved in them discussions. Um, he didn't pick me the week before, um, but he picked me. He picked me for the big one. Uh, I'd like to think that I know how to get it done when it really matters, and probably the way we were going to play and have to approach playing a team that big and that physical and that good in attack recently that we were going to have to get the ball away from our try line. And then that's what you did. You, I mean, you basically very rarely kicked out. You always kick long. Don't give them their set piece. Don't allow them to get pens. Is that was that always the plan? Yeah, yeah. We didn't want we didn't want the ball going off with um, how big their set pieces, but how good their launch plays are as well. Uh, obviously, really well organised, and um, the more time Faz has to pull the strings, the worse it is for you. So yeah, we wanted to limit that time. Can Can I just ask you, Fred? 20 seconds to go and you take the drop. Is that because if you miss, you get one last shot? Or would you rather have had it as the final play regardless? You're asking details that his brain wasn't confusing. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah, right, mate, I'll be you. Am I going into the uh, Matrix here? No, boys, I'll be honest with you, no, mate. Like, genuinely, I, um, I was struggling. It's quite embarrassing. Coming, I, I know I come on early, but coming off the bench, but I was struggling with crap. Like, and I was like, I had, to make, I had to get Freddie Stewart to kick a kick to touch. Just because I knew, I, I thought in my head that there might, might be one moment or one kick to, to potentially win it. But yeah, mate, I was going to chip and chase it, mate. Honestly, <laughs> I was going to chip it. <laughs> and then it didn't quite happen. But, to, mate, to touch on, like, Steve and Wiggy and that, mate, I've, and, you know, Smithy, Deeks, Kev Sinfield, mate, the coaches through the week, what they instilled in the boys, and then the boys went out and executed the game plan. You know, like Jasper Visa's uh, try at the weekend yeah. was a rehearsed, a rehearsed set play, mate that we 
analysing the week. And I think Wiggy was be modest. Oh, don't, don't be don't be modest, mate. Did you bring that in? Was that your was that your call? But like we did it, we execute it in the, in the most precious moment, and it gives us a try out of nothing really. Go on, Wiggy, take the credit. Uh, yeah, that might have, that might have been mine, but I stole it from one Steve wanted to do something different. And we saw what the Bulls did last week at Leinster. Was it uh, the Bulls last week? Yeah, and, yeah. Um, yeah, so we tried, We just had a slight variation on that. And a lot of teams set up with their worst defenders, all the guys who aren't dying to make the tackle on that side, and all the guys who you don't want to run into on the other side, too. Why would you go that way? Yeah. Um, but we, there's one thing coming up with another thing going, like LSU tap, and then Jasper come around the corner. <laughs> <It's> not, <laughs> yeah, it, it helps having those two. Um, obviously, Ellis being the, the fourth wheel of our pod, how how good for him as well as a send off for what he's been as a captain this year, and and how how much do you think he's grown, and how much is and how is his parting ability on the weekend more importantly? Oh, well, I'll let Freddie talk about his parting. I'll talk about I'll talk about his rugby <laughs> and his captaincy. He uh, he's been immense all year. He's played loads of minutes, turns up every week, and flies into it. Boys boys love him. They follow him. Um, he's got a genuine care for everyone as well, like a, probably a side that people don't see. Um, but he's been he's been an absolute pleasure to work with, and I'll let Freddie take it away what he's like on the fist. <laughs> mate, he's, a, he's an animal, isn't he? He's an animal. But I think, I, mean, I think for me, he's like so. I was there when Genji first joined Tigers as like, and he had his troubles at Bristol. He rocked up, and you know, he was he was what he was. He was abrasive. He was sort of unapologetically himself, but almost a little bit misunderstood. And I think Steve's really given him that that captaincy role. I've seen him just grow and just be like a leader. And I think you just you just follow him into anything, whether it was a scrap in the street or you know a rugby. Well, fan. hang on, Freddie. Yeah. There's no chance you're following him. To, <laughs> yeah, actually, you'd, no, no, you'd start it, and then he would fill it. He would finish it for you. Yeah, I would. Yeah, I'd be ten meters behind, but I'd follow him eventually. Do you know what I mean? Like once the once the ambulance has come and cleared everyone up, I'll be I'll be still over it. <laughs> You'll be filming um, it. No, You'll be filming it. Oh yeah, I'll be filming it. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, but no, honestly, mate, like, what a bloke! I couldn't be couldn't be happier for him either um, to sign off in the way that, that he wanted. Um, you know, incredible, and, and his performance yesterday as well, both on the pitch and on the piss, was uh, exceptional. Whose idea was the double denim, and what was the theme? It was Genji straight away. Won it. He said, right. "We've not got time for fancy dress, so everyone's favourite double denim." So. We're all frantically buying. You try to be prepping for a final. We're all I was down TK Max on Friday morning, um, frantically trying to find some <laughs> ditching <laughs> denim. I, yeah. Incredible. Go on, Freddie. <clears throat> no, I went. I went for a little, little short, short dungaree set. Um, we from, saw. We uh, saw Fred. We saw. Yeah. No, yeah. yeah. <laughs> We've all um, seen. And the, but but the best thing is, I woke up and I I'd, I'd had two cold chicken nuggets and about four pints of cider for breakfast and then I was like right how am I going to get to Welford Road to meet the lads so I was like oh, just get the training so I literally had a 20 minute walk from my house in double denim absolutely steaming with the premiership trophy over my shoulder just walking through Market Arbor mate <laughs> on the train some kids mate fair play I don't know who they were there was these three kids got on the train at Market Arbor with me spoke to me the whole way and I said oh what are you boys doing in Leicester today then they went Oh no, we just come and sit with you. They got back off, got off the train, <laughs> walked over the bridge, got on the next train back to Market Arbor. Amazing. That, that yeah, is amazing. That no, is good, mate. My first thing when I saw your uh, double denim was you still you still obviously skip arm day. Um spaghetti I mean, arms. Right now, mate. <laughs> Wiggy, how often do I go in the gym? All the time. There's just no growth. Every, every day. It's always every day. Yeah. Oh, holy does. God, well, God, God loves a trier. Mate, one can, day. Unfortunately, when you when you've got a melted candle as a body, you can't do anything about it. <laughs> um, no, you should see him, mate. He gets he comes in with his prep meals now and stuff. He, he likes to he likes to play up. He has his. 400 calorie meals when lads are, lads are having a refill. He's, oh. he's, uh, he's trying to impress someone anyway. The <laughs> model pro. I can't remember if it was you, Freddie, or, or Ellis, who put up a photo of um, Chris Ashton. Definitely not in denim. There's quite a flowery number going on and a heck of a lot of ivory as well. I'm not sure if he was wandering across the plains whether he'd escaped from the... <laughs> The, uh, the the hunters out there. There was a lot of teth being being born. But Wiggy, <laughs> knowing him as you do, just a word on. I mean, the fact that his career has absolutely bobbed all over the place, and he pops up. Obviously, he's a back to back Premiership winner because he got a medal last year with Quinns, didn't he? He's not. He's not a back to back. Well, he'll, he'll, he'll tell you. Chris Ashton will tell you he is a back to back Premiership winner. 
he won't. He won't. He won't claim last one. He won't. Uh, I think he got a medal. Were you a bit gutted no, that that little? You, you thought? Did you think the old combo was coming in with the grubber back on the inside? You go. You're going to be underneath the sticks. He just, he just shinned it. He just shinned it. I said he'd have finished that five years ago, but um, no, he his, could have had a couple. His nose got in the way. Couldn't see the ball when he dropped it. <laughs> um, but just, I, I mean, how has he no fitted idea. in, and how's how's he handled? I suppose the last. Well, I mean, obviously six months have been brilliant, but the last eighteen months of his career. Um, do you know what? He was really nervous before he turned up about um, did he want to go through it all again? Because obviously, um, whatever's happened at the other clubs has happened. Um, and he turned up, I think, on a week's trial for us to have a bit of a look at him and him to have a look at us. Um, I obviously sold him the dream when I rang him and said, look, we need we need someone uh, cover on the wing. Will you come? And I said, I think you'll love it. Because what Chris is, is he's a competitor. And but what he can't do is, if he doesn't think something's right, he doesn't he doesn't keep his mouth shut, does he? He doesn't so conform. He you know, no, he doesn't conform. But <laughs> if it's good, if it's good, he'll he'll do everything hundred percent, and that's what we've had out of him. Is that he is to turn up and love it? Obviously, we can't speak highly enough of uh, what Borthas has done in the in the time that he's been there. But isn't it amazing that he takes players who sort of the norm of cast aside and said they're sort of done, and you've got. You know, Ellis standing up, Wiggy, you at 92, and then and the likes of of Chris, plus the young kids that have sort of made a name for themselves, you know, in a pack that you wouldn't necessarily, no, no one necessarily jumps off the page, but it just shows when you're all pulling in the same direction for a person who obviously has got the balance right between work and work and play for someone who you only think of as working both of us. Please tell me he smiled at some point, lads. Um, he's, he's happiest you've seen him, mate. As head coach, uh, he's he likes reveling everyone else's fun. Like you, you wouldn't have him down as someone who's going to. Uh, he's a voyeur. Time. He's a sicko for... voyeur in the corner, isn't he? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> he loves it. He loves it. Like, um, he, he was he was um, obviously instrumental in Freddie coming back, uh, and he wanted Freddie because of his right boot and him sticking over drop goals. But he wanted him for his personality as well. Like he he gets on with uh, Hask and he gets on with all these outgoing characters and. I think people probably don't understand that just because he's not this outgoing guy that he doesn't he doesn't want uh, people right around him. He's, he's head of performance. Ali Walters is as crazy a man as you'll ever meet. But he <laughs> loves him. He loves him. Was both as asleep on the street somewhere, or did he lead the fun <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, no, he wouldn't. He, he didn't. He didn't come out with us. We had a court session with both as we had to make him eat. Mars bars and drink pints of full fat coke <laughs> because he won't drink. So I said to Freddie, make sure he just eats Mars bars and drinks coke and make him fat. Uh, cheer him up with some sugar. Tighten those hamstrings. Yeah. Um, Freddie, I, I mean, given what you've been saying, Wiggy, I want, I want to bring this back to you, Freddie. Steve Borthwick said this about you. When Freddie's name came across my desk, I wanted to ring him straight, straight away and just see if he's interested. I got the energy and excitement from him straight away. This guy wants this challenge. He wants to come back here. And I think our fans played an enormous part. It leaked out. The fans were trying to persuade him to join. Phenomenal player and also an incredibly gregarious character. And you want that in your changing room. You want that in your squad. I mean, it's it's easy to say nice things after you've you've kicked your team to a to a Premiership <laughs> title. But even so, what, what do those words mean to you? Because on paper, you're fairly different characters. I'm not sure Bortha's Instagram ca- account is quite as rampant as yours is <laughs> over the last 48 hours. I, I um I. The thing with Steve is, is and Wiggy at the nail on the head, is right, but just because he's not necessarily that character himself, it doesn't mean he doesn't want to be around it. And actually, mate, some of the last we've had in team meetings, group meetings, coming in, hearing about the young lads' horrendous dating stories and, and all that sort of stuff, mate, he absolutely loves it. So, mate, to have those words means, means a lot. Um, I just like I said, I love this club, mate. I've, you know, two special clubs to me, massively, a, a Gloucester and Leicester. Um, but when I was here last time, all the sort of unfinished business stuff, all that kind of thing. So to come back and, and have the shot has been good. Like that said, it's been, it's been tough, mate, because, you know, you have to put your ego to one side and realise that, you know, I was like that, I'll, I'll be sort of second choice fly half stroke fullback. I'll still get plenty of time. And then arguably two of our most consistent performers all year have been the fly half and the bloody fullback. So you end up on the bench. Sort of not playing. Then Fordy doesn't get called up for England, and you're like, oh, class, here we go. Do you know what I mean? I'm playing, whatever. But then you know, you keep your head down, you keep working hard, you try to bring good energy to the to the group, and you get your you get your rewards. So, so it's been a funny old year, but. 
to to win it yesterday, um, Saturday. I don't know what day it is, mate, but to win it and just see the smile on the face of the boys and have that moment in the change room was was world class. It's an interesting one that the fact that people always want their minutes and they always want that, but. Freddie would never ever swap the last two weeks of his like coming on early last week and then coming on at the early this you know twenty seven minutes on Saturday for a, a a season where he played every game. Yeah. It, it's just you've got to ride those as you say you've got to ride, ride those storms. high times, ride those storms, and then if you can ride it well enough, there'll be sunshine at the end of it. Well done, Frederick. I think I think, I, I think that's the thing, Jim. But I think it's the thing as well, mate. When I was in Japan. You know, I was playing. I love my time in Japan. I'd love to go back out there at some stage and and, and play again. But Z- you've just come... got you got an add a zero yeah, onto exactly. it. Your, your yen yeah. has just gone up a little bit. <laughs> yeah, I want a few more yen now. I want a few more yen. But no, no, like, but then you come back and yeah, I, there was chatting to other clubs um, as well that I probably could have gone to, been first choice and started every week. But I just saw what Steve was building and the sort of dream that he kind of sold. And the club itself being what it is to me, I just thought, you know what, like, I'm going to go back and just, just see what happens. Just, you know, train hard, give it my all, see what happens. And like you say, it's come round, it's come good for me. I was in the right place at the right time. And <clears> yeah, you know, you know, premiership champion. Come a long way from that session at DMU uh, early on in the year, haven't you? Oh, God, oh, my head is <laughs> oh, fully gone, boys. Go on, fully go on. Gone. Let us in, went, let us in. I went to Nashville on the week off, didn't I? I went ah. to Nashville. I, I, we, we had the bye week. I went. I went to Nashville on the piss for a week. Um, I saw that you, you were line dancing, weren't you? Man, yeah, what we, we all saw. We all felt like we were there. Right. Literally, I took I took the whole of my Instagram following to Nashville with me, mate. <laughs> right. Anyway, I come back two day, two days after coming back. I test positive for COVID. Right. So I missed Bordeaux away in Queens at home. I come back. I train for a couple of days. I get the start at, against Connor at home, and honestly, I was terrible. I literally tried like a banana kick, put it straight out on the fall. I was just all, all over the shot, right? I was absolutely terrible. And then Steve dropped me for the Bristol game on um, Boxing Day. And basically, he just said, he just said to me, he goes, oh, mate, you, you, you fucked up going to Nashville. Like, you shouldn't have gone, got COVID, whatever. So I was fuming, mate, like properly fuming. Next thing you know, I'm at a training session at DMU, defending at 10. Tim, do you know me, mate? I've never taken a gum shield out to train it with me in my <laughs> life, mate. I took my gum shield, my shoulder pads, a scrum hat. Mate, I chopped, I chopped Nando, I chopped Nemzi Nandolo maybe two or three times. I've never been more prepared to get a concussion in all my career, mate. <laughs> I was like, mate, I'm going to leave this pitch in a body bag. I don't care, mate. I was fuming. Fuming. Uh, hey, and look where it's led to. Look where it's all worth it. Mate, yeah. exactly. <clears throat> Do you know what the best thing is? I turned around to Lenny as well because I was sort of like, I'm always the one on the music or messing around with my top off or whatever. And I'm always like, I was going, Lenny, oh, see how much of a clown I am now. They, keep, they think I'm a clown around here like this, proper like getting emotional. Anyway, next week I get back in the team. I'm back naked dancing with my boxes around me. Yesterday, <laughs> acting like a complete clown, <laughs> isn't I? And Lenny would never let that go now. Hey, never. never step away from the true Freddy. I'm <laughs> into that. Um, you mentioned just very quickly. You mentioned Ben then, and I don't know. I don't know whether you guys saw it in amongst the celebrations, but there were almost the best moments. Second, your drop goal. We'll put it that way. Was the cheer that Tom Youngs got um, when his big face? Well, his big face. His face came up on the big screen, um, and it was a it was a proper sort of lump in the throat type job. But just give us a sense of a how motivating the last few weeks has been for you as a squad, Richard. But also. I mean, just a very, very special moment for a very special man who who was smiling broadly, but I can imagine it was, you know, it's only an interlude, really. Yeah, no, it's it's obviously been well documented what uh, him and his family have been going through. And when you're a club like Leicester and you're as intertwined as the youngs are to it, then you probably feel it even more. I think it's been really tough all year, but he came to the Bristol game uh, and led us out and took us there. And he spoke to us, he spoke to the 23 in the changing room. I reckon there was there was tears everywhere. I've never been in a changing room like it before. It was like incredible. I was actually like worried that it was going to be three red cards in the first. Two minutes <laughs> I've yeah. never seen a set of lads so like I am going to go and do it for you. <clears throat> and I think we had that. We had a bit of a higher cause. Uh, we had something else. That's what Kev Sinfield said. He said it's funny. It feels like we've got something else to do it for. That's more important. And um, just to give him a few moments where he doesn't have to think about what he's going through and, and give him a little bit of joy. I think we, I think we had a, a really big cause. 
Amazing. It is amazing. And on the back, just jumping on Super Kev, who you've talked about there, you know, not many people really know him as a character. They've they've seen, we've had him on the pod and he's a he's an incredible human being. What sort of, what differences has, has he brought to that Leicester in terms of how he motivates? And, you know, I always see these rugby league guys as they're so positive, they're so upbeat, different to a Sappuccino like, like we are. Uh, how How has he been and how has he fit in? Because obviously now he's, he's getting all the plaudits that he deserves. But uh, give us a little insight into what, what he is day to day. Uh, he's obviously excellent coach to start with. His, um, his detail is incredible. Not only does he do defence, he helps me with attack and he does um, kicking game. He's involved in everything we do. I think he has a massive impact on individuals one on one time with him. I think he's. I think that's where he shines. I think people don't want to let him down. So when he asks them to do things, they do it. He's got those intangibles really that you can't you know, put your finger on. But like everyone's really bothered about sort of like making him happy, not like not letting him down. And he doesn't put any pressure on that. It's just because of the incredible human he is that that's what that's what happens. But he's got a lot of skill to it as well with his knowledge of um, how quickly he's picked up our game. He, he says himself he's nowhere near the finished article, but I think he's pretty damn good. <laughs> I love yeah. it. Tell me, tell me, um, I, the, the lots of other things I want to talk. Actually, I'm going to come back. So I want to ask you both about where now. But um, did you bump into the Saris boys on the on your night out? I saw a picture with Ellis and Jamie George. Or was that just the two yeah. of them? Yeah. No, there's a, there's a few of them that turned up the same place here later on. I love that. Yeah, um, nice to see Jamie. Richard, obviously for you, I mean, you know, the trophy is the trophy, but what it looked like, and certainly what, what, what we heard from Owen Farrell post-match, was that Saracens were incredibly gracious um, in the aftermath of it, and they, they tend to win well, but they always seem to lose well as well. Was, was there some, some kind words and some nice words between you and, and old friends? Yeah, they were awesome. They were awesome, mate. A couple of them came to the change rooms to say hello and well done. Um, but they, they were great from straight afterwards to seeing a couple of them last night. They showed their class, didn't they? I don't think they've lost they lost the final since 2014. And yeah. they've like you said, they've won they've won a lot. Uh, but they were they were exactly how you'd want to act in that situation, which is a credit to them and the club, but no real surprise. Yeah, good on them. And Freddie, did you have some some nice words with old friends? With you know, with, was there a, a, obviously there was a quite an iconic photo with you peeling away to celebrate the drop goal and. And Owen sort of having tried to charge it down and things. Were there some nice moments for you with old foes? Yeah, there was. I think it's... Um, I'll tell you what, it's, it's one thing that's... Obviously, the moment, I, ne- I never want to exchange it for anything. But unfortunately, sometimes when you're in that moment, what people don't see is you get carted off to do interviews and press stuff. And you can't I remember doing the, the press conference with Steve and all you can hear is the boys singing in the change room. And you're kind of like... You know, you sort of like, oh, you just want to get out and, and get with the boys. So I actually missed the opportunity right at the end of the game as well to see any or too many of the Saris boys. And I just say, you know, Jamie George, I seen him last night. He's a guy I played England age group stuff with. Literally within an hour after the game, I get a message from him just being like, hey, mate, sorry, sorry I couldn't catch you. But like, sort of saying, like, well done, massive moment, like proud of you, whatever. And he just think like, I say, mate, unbelievable touch. And I thought, you know, bumping into a few of them last night as well. You know, what a team. And I think that's what Wiggy touched on earlier as well. That's why it makes it so special, mate, to beat a team like that, as good as that, you know, with all the names and players they had. I think that's what, what made it special. It was, it, we beat a proper, proper team yesterday in a proper, proper rugby game. And yeah, it just, um, they were they were fantastic. Couldn't speak highly enough of them. It's interesting now, isn't it? If you look at, obviously, Borthers now, I know obviously Borthers has done a bit of Saris, then he did, he's done under Eddie and now he's at Leicester. But then Japan you look, as well. And Japan. But and then, Bristol for a week. But then you look at what um, Al Sanderson is doing at Sale. It's like the Wolfpack is expanding to share its love all around other clubs as well. And do you get a feel of that? that you can see, you know, what, what you guys, well, especially what... Uh, Wiggy pioneered at Saris. Do you see that is is the strength of what those coaches are taking out to other clubs now, and they're, they're doing it on that in their own way and making small adjustments? I think. Well, I think the, the big thing you said you have to do it in your own way, but you always look at teams that win. No, yeah, we won for a long time. So um, when teams win, definitely have to notice and deal with what they bring and, and do that yourself. So there's definitely a Saracens influence in. Um, how the game is played in, the, in some of those things but 
I think if anyone tried to copy and paste it, you you get smashed anyway. Yeah, I think I think, so, I, yeah, yeah. I think <laughs> but what well, well, sorry, the it's 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 becoming more and more apparent now with with professional rugby is the old the old days what me and Hask hated was that if you're not doing well you train harder. It's not about that, is it? It's about it's about creating the bond between the players, and that's done socially more than anything else. Making sure you care about the guy to your left or your right. You might say he's a friend, but it's rugby's still a game that really turns up. And I think that is one thing that Sarri's brought to the, has brought in spades that now other teams are sort of copying and kicking on in their own way. Just the way you've described everything in the changing room. Obviously, you know what what you had to go through with what the the clubs had to go through with Tom Young's situation it just feels like it's so galvanized I mean I've never heard Freddie talk so well about a group in terms of wanting to be involved and everything else and it's very special and yeah. uh, obviously it's paid off in what in what you've achieved so well done on that fantastic um Thank you, mate. what's next how much longer do the celebrations go on for when do you book in for dialysis one when you, when more you off, day <laughs> one more day one more when are you off, <laughs> when are you getting your budgies and going on holiday <laughs> oh well, man. I, like I said, I'm I'm a spoken for man now, mate. So I've had my two days celebrating with the boys. I said, I said we're uh, going to go out. It means it means he can put the budgies on now because he, he doesn't have to yeah, worry about pulling. Right. <laughs> so I said, mate. Oh, honestly, mate, we're gonna. I'm gonna put in. Oh yeah, mate. I don't. I can eat what I want now, mate. I'm gonna be. I literally. I look like Goody, mate. That's what I do when I go away. <laughs> better hair. Um, better hair. Yeah, but hopefully, yeah. But um, no, mate. I've not booked anything because I tell you what, as well, it's that funny thing. It's the same with the social yesterday. You know, it comes to like Thursday, Friday, and you're packing like du- double denim, and you're arranging this this social, but you're also going tomorrow. Say it's Friday, you go oh, tomorrow. We're either going to be on cloud nine, or probably you know, absolutely devastated and not wanting to go out. So it was the weirdest thing, and it's the same with holidays. That man, I just didn't want to think about it. You know, I had to be so selfish uh, the last sort of week, two weeks, just to be like, look, I want to focus to get this job done, and now it's done. Mate, I'm jetting off somewhere. I don't know where yet, but we'll decide where. And I'm going to just drink my drink my body weight in wine, mate, and beer. And I'll worry about that on July 18th, I think. He, he knows what's coming. He's waiting for the socials to kick in and someone offer him a free holiday and he'll he'll, he'll pimp the crap out <laughs> yeah. of that. So. Oh, you are available yeah, yeah, for a freebie. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. W- Wiggy, what are you doing? When, when have you got to get the file of facts back out and um, start planning as opposed to relaxing? Um, probably, probably, probably pretty sharpish. Um, Kids are in school, so I cannot uh, take them out unless I unless I get a fine, which I'm considering doing the way I feel right now. You're northern. You're never yeah, going to yeah, take yeah. them out and pay the fine. Exactly. <laughs> That's probably right, mate. Yeah. Right. Um, and, and what about you and play? Are you going to go on? Are we doing another year and another year and another year? Um, are you after Shawsy's ma- Are you after Shawsy's mantle? Um, what Shaws? I don't know what Shaws. Well, mantle. Well, I think Shaws was, was about 52 play. when he wrapped up, so <laughs> yeah. you got a way to go. Yeah, no, um, no, I'm going to play. I'm going to play next year. Um, all my mates um, have all now finished because I'm an old man and they were even older. And they've all said, "Play as long as you can." The best thing you'll ever do. So while I feel I can contribute, that was always the that was always the aim. So while I feel good, I will play. Are you conflicted as obviously, you know, the man who started at nine and therefore celebrates as a player, but also has an overview and um, you know is plotting the match winning tries and is going to be hiring and firing in the not too distant future. Is that is that a confliction or are you pretty comfortable with both hats? Um, it was definitely talked about at the start of the season. Uh, it wouldn't have worked if the lads hadn't been first class with it. So Steve set it out. If it hadn't worked, I would have retired on the spot. It would have been, you know, I know my priority is coaching and helping do the players. But if I could contribute on the field as well, I was going to do that. So that was the, that was the discussion. He set it out pretty plainly to the lads, um, but they, they've been awesome. Judging by the vocal cords, you do still know how to celebrate. <laughs> what's, what's left of them anyway? And Freddie, I mean, to come to you, and I, I, I sort of, I don't want to go sort of too deep, but to look at your journey and your career and, you know, the unbelievable talent that you, you showed at Gloucester and, you know, the highs and the lows and debut off the bench against the All Blacks and then, you know, a bit of time in purgatory and drop ball over the over the trial line for Bath. Actually, do you know, I was thinking the other day about the fact we, we were talking, you, you went through Bells as well, didn't you, at one stage, which was, you know, I mean, you've just had it all in a career that has taken you all around the world. And yet here you are, you know, whacking over a drop goal in, with 20 seconds to go. I mean, when, when will the moment drop? Are we, are we talking movies now? I think we're, we're almost into movies territory, are we? 
Honestly, mate. Honestly, boys, I need I need to write a book or something. But I tell you what, the worst bit is Ben Abano's <laughs> next next documentary. Next documentary. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. The Instagrammer yeah. who kicked drop goals as opposed to the player <laughs> who had no count. Honestly, do you know what the worst bit is? Is even before I had the bells balls, and even now it goes funny, mate. You see me celebrating, like the face goes lopsided, mate. The eye closes up, like. You know, people ask me what what's the best what's the best feature on my face. I say the fact I can't fucking see it. Um, <laughs> it's probably the best thing. But um, no, lads, like it's been like the thing is, it's been out of a journey. And I know you get the old cliche and stuff like that. But to have that moment yesterday, not just for me, mate. As soon as the whistle went, actually, I celebrated with the boys. I ran straight into the crowd and saw my mum, my dad, my brothers. Gave them a kiss, a cuddle. You know, all that. Those people that have been there through like the shittest times, like the real terrible times, are just sitting there, like. I said to my old man, like, there was times where genuinely I was at Bath and I called him up and I was like, I think I'm done. Like, I just think I just don't want, I don't, I don't want to play the game anymore. I just like, I'll go and do something else. And, and then you stick to it and you get that moment. So, like, honestly, I've had it all bells palsy. I was ugly before that, but that actually gave me a bit of juice now. That's amazing. Still, still got the best um, hair but, in the league. I, I, but, I mean, but, genuinely, I, I, I mean, do, do you feel like, it's, I mean, it's, you can't say it's all been worth it, but I, I want to know how much a moment like this means, given all the crap that you've been through? Uh, mate, honestly, everything. Like, I couldn't... I was almost in tears at the end of the semi-final when we beat Saints, just to think that, right, i got a shot now to, like, do something special. But in my wildest dreams, to have that moment on Saturday, and even now, mate, I sit there and I just start laughing, because I'm like, it actually, does that actually happen? Um, but yeah, mate, to, to, to have done it is great. And I think, for me, the most important thing, just to do it with great blokes, like, Jenny, I know a lot of people say it, but that team that we've got, both the coaching staff and the playing staff, is just is special, mate. We've got something that, you know, I love, you know, I, I love going, I, waking up every day, even when I'm not playing, to go in and train with those boys and have the crack that we do and work as hard as we do, mate, to, to watch them all in their double denim yesterday, making absolute fools of themselves and just loving life. Mate. Honestly, as you get a bit older, you appreciate those things, mate. And, ah, oh, boys, I can't even put it in words. I'm, I'm honestly made up. Yeah, it gets me quite emotional even thinking about it. Who would play you in the Happy Gilmore equivalent, the rugby union Happy Gilmore equivalent? <laughs> <laughs> who would play Who would play me? I, boys, I don't even know, mate. I'd like to say Patrick Swayze, mate, but he's 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 uh, like young. Patrick he's Swayze, also dead. Which is, <laughs> yeah. Actually, if he played you, if he played you now, it'd be about right. <laughs> May he rest in peace, Patrick. Thank you and apologies. Oh, I, don't, <laughs> oh, I, I, I don't know, mate. It'll be it'll be so, it'll be someone it'll be someone. Uh, who, hey, Fred, I'll be, throw I'll throw a good one out for you, Christian Bale. Yes. Yeah, no I was. <laughs> if you go for if you go for lookalikes, I'll probably say something like Gordon Ramsay's left testicle would be a for lookalikes. Uh, Same uh, el yeah, elasticity in the skin, yeah, Fred. <laughs> the other thing that we do need to clear up here is for both of you, you uh, Tins and, and Freddie, you've both had very prominent weeks on social media. So the big question is, what may, what gains you more followers? Wearing your wife's fascinator at Ascot <laughs> or kicking a drop goal in the Premiership final. How many did you go up by, courtesy of hats at Ascot? Uh, 100,000. Right, 100,000. Freddie, how many have you gone up since um, since Saturday and kicking the winning drop goal in the Premiership final? Um, 150. How many? 100, well, 150 no, only. No, 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 no. no I've got, I think I've gone up about six, seven. Right. Six, seven, mate. Uh, but Just imagine yeah. if you'd kick the drop goal in the fascinator, yeah. you'd have been absolutely <laughs> home have been, have been, now. I'd have been off the chain. I'd have been like a Kardashian. Yeah. Uh, but realistically, it has nothing to do with me. Oh, my mind's gone up. But there you go. Yeah. Um, Wiggy, a quick question for you. Obviously, you've won seven now. Does each one taste as sweet? How, uh, having never experienced uh, repeated success that you have, how do you? How do you, are you very philosophical about this one or does it, each one carry a slightly different meaning? Uh, yeah, they all carry a bit different. This one, um, this one was special because uh, all the work that went into it, like I said, where we were, who we played, but also the fact that I got to help coach. Um, and I was a bit of a, what did I got? Owen, Owen Farrell once said, you're one of the most stubborn people I've ever met, but it was a compliment. It was like, they told me I couldn't do both and then, so I set about wanting to do both. And I was lucky that I got a head coach in Steve that is good enough to facilitate me uh, being able to do both. So, um, yeah, that's why I wanted to do it and wanted to prove it could be done because 
I won't say that it couldn't be. So uh, that definitely led on my stubborn streak that I have. I love it. His balls is going to get a proper holiday. He certainly deserves one. There was some lovely imagery of him when you kicked the drop goal. I mean, sort of talk about Stone Cold. But... No, it, but literally, and then when the final whistle went, they went straight on, and it was just, it was like it was relief. Yeah. Rather than yeah. enjoyment. Um, was he, was he really, does he think about the pressure or is he, is, does his face tell a different story to what goes on inside? Oh, he, he feels, he feels every second of a game, mate. Yeah, does he? When he's in that coaching box, yeah. Uh, Kev, Kev is the duty of um, sitting next to him, so um, we all we all do our stores, and uh, Kev got the short one, so he's he's next to it, um, timing him down. Oh, and will Balthus get some proper time off? Does he do that kind of thing? Have you said to him it would be good to kind of, you know, mow the lawn and tend to the the, the, the flowers a little bit, or is he just he's straight back into it tomorrow? Um, I don't know. I'm sure I'll spend some time with boys, but he he, um, yeah, I, I wouldn't be surprised if he's if he's working away. Unbelievable. Anymore, I will not. I've got a quick game to play. Uh, go for it. <clears throat> Can we do something very quickly, which I think would be quite entertaining, just because one of the things about this Leicester team, and I'm sort of comparing it to not necessarily the last side that won in 2013, but certainly the side that did four between 99 and 2003, is that you've, you've got some unbelievable characters. There's a lot of outpouring of sort of, I'm not going to say love and affection, but it's a very easy team to like, whereas the team in the early 2000s prided themselves on the fact they were very hard Dis to like. Yeah. yeah. Dislike. So can we play a very quick game, which is just you each get the chance to say one word about each of the team that started on Saturday. So if I start with Ellis, Freddie, one word to describe Ellis. Lee, I'm, I'm going to go leader, mate. I'm going to go leader. Trust me, like that bloke leads. Richard. Have I got Ellis as well, have I? Yeah. Um, legend Montoya unsung unsung what that bloke's done is off the, what he does week in week out is unbelievable he just doesn't get the credit for how good he is it's good one word though that isn't it yeah <laughs> sorry unsung unsung we got to explain it or not no that's good I've had a bit since I've had a beer let me live <laughs> yeah, but... Dan Cole Richard um, durable Durable. Miserable or durable? <laughs> both. Could, could be He's both. both. He's both. He's uh, ridiculous amount of rugby he has played at Tyler's Prop. It is ridiculous. Good on him. That's still going. Chessum, Freddie. Char mate, character. Love it. What a boy. Green, Wiggy. He's on song. On song. Liebenberg, Freddie. Annoyingly handsome. <laughs> Two words, we'll let you have it. Uh, Tommy Reffel, Wiggy. Um, Jackler <laughs> Jasper Visa Freddie Animal uh, Richard Wigglesworth Freddie <laughs> How predictable How predictable this is going to be He is the kid that draws a knob on his textbook isn't he He forever will be that child um, uh, Benjamin Button Benjamin Button George Ford Wiggy Classy uh, Potter Freddie Magician. Hey. Love it. Hey. Oh, I see what you've done there. Porter. Well done, Porter, as well. Good day oh, for the club. What a story that is. Yeah. What a story that How's is. he going to go in, Oz? He'll go real well. Yeah? Love it. Good. They'll, they'll, they'll get into camp and they'll really like him. Good. Good boy. One word. Good boy. <laughs> Good boy. Uh, Mattis, Mar Mattis Maroney, Fred. Just a boy. Love two Just love it love. All right. You get Ashton, Wiggy, and I, I defy you to not say, use the same word that Fred used earlier. This is a real test of how far you've come as a coach as to whether you can resist <laughs> no, the opportunity. No, I am. It's, with every five of my being, um, prolific. Prolific. Well done. And Freddie Stewart, Fred. Uh, king of the skies. I know it's not one word, but that's what he is, mate. King Unbelievable. of the skies. All right. I tell you what, you can finish off, Wig, with, with Freddie Burns. Alcoholic, Instagrammer, yeah. influencer. One word, one word to describe Freddie Burns. I don't know if that word's invented. Right. <laughs> I don't know if it's in the English language. It so. may well come. <laughs> oh, fellas, it's <laughs> been it's been very very nice of you to drop in. Tell us what's next, what, Freddie. What's the next twenty four hours hold? Other than you know ice packs and ice baths and it's not that sleep. it's not not that matter of a Monday as we're going at the moment, Fred. I think you can get madder. Oh, mate, trust me, we've been in, oh, mate, Saturday night, all the day yesterday. Uh, but, I'm, yeah, I'm going to get red wine drunk with my girlfriend tonight. 
Yeah. Oh, give him back. Give him back. Give him back, mate. And Wiggy, you've probably got to sober up for the school run in about 10 minutes, haven't you? I, I do. I am just, they're all glaring at me through the window. Oh, Lord. Taking them out for a meal. So, uh, well done. Yes, I'll see you. Bad duties. Fellas, many, many congratulations. What a hell of a story. Thanks, what a hell of a final. And what a hell of a way to win it, Freddie Burns. Thank you very much for dropping in. We'll see you both soon. Look after yourselves. Cheers, Legends, Enjoy guys. Your Enjoy. Thank well done, team. Cheers, All the best to everyone. Right and there they go. Are you more jealous? Just, could you, can you see two different sort of, a different yeah. a night of, or how the next week is going to yes. go? Yeah. W- Wiggy with his... 25 kids yeah and then obviously and, and a coaching job and all the recruitment that needs to be done <laughs> and debriefing and reporting etc Freddie uh, Freddie's going to be living the same old groundhog day yeah. for the next two weeks absolutely brilliant and very very good in the choice are you more jealous of the premiership medal or the the three day bender that they've just been on I, I always miss a three day bender there you go, but you can still do them now I suppose um, um, no I mean if Wiggy could just give me one of his seven, that'd be quite nice. Yeah. I mean, it is extraordinary. Both, both of their stories are extraordinary for totally different reasons, but no one will ever win seven again. You wouldn't have, you wouldn't have thought so. You wouldn't have thought one T. And then to make the changes around the teams to get, be in the right place at the right time. Yeah. No, fair play to him. You know, I thought Wiggy was outstanding. I mean, a, a brave call from Steve to, to yeah. obviously go with him uh, and back him. Um, and then... But Wiggy performed out of his skin. I mean, I think Austin Healy talked about it during the match. He was he was so good. Yeah. Um, so fair play. There is something. This we, is why I always say age is just a number. If you still can still do it, you can still do it. Yeah. Stop stop bringing age up. We have often said in the past that a strong Leicester means a strong England, or English rugby needs a strong Leicester in order to kind of to be as meaty as perhaps it it wants to be. And with that in mind, normal services resume. But that point, that it's hard for them to talk about because they're in the thick of it. But when you look at some of the characters in that squad, Ellis and the growth that he's shown as a man, the evergreen Dan Cole, you know, Wiggy, who just goes on and on, Freddie Burns, who has had some desperately tough times and kicks a win. I mean, the, the, the celebration for him it, uh, was worth the entrance money alone. You wrap in the, the story that the Youngs family have had to go through, you know, George Ford delivering right to the end despite the fact that he's off. We've got, you know, Ashton coming back and somehow finding his way into a title-winning side yet again. Freddie Stewart is the young up-and-coming. They are a very, very, and I've never said this before about Leicester, they're a very easy side to get behind. Uh, yeah, completely. You know, we talk about how great this game is with characters, how great, you know, it's all about, it's not about the individual. Yeah. It's about his role within that team and how much he cherishes it. I've never seen Freddie wax lyrically about an environment like he's like he's just talked about. Yeah. You know, and... um He's always been that character who is the heart and soul of it, drives it, enjoys the, you know, will push the boundaries, always wants to have fun. Uh, but he's found the balance of of where he can he can have the fun and get it done. Now they've got to go again. That the hunted, be- no, the hunter becomes the hunted. Yeah, it's the, always the hardest bit, you know, is to then back it up. But you would say they've got to be in a good place when when you've led yeah. from week one to week twenty four. You, you know, you've you've proved that you're hard to, but you're not just a a playoff type team. Yeah. You've just proved that you can do everything. You know, they've got they'll have other dreams to chase. They've got proper Heineken, well, Champions Cup dreams that yeah. they can now go after again. Um, you know, they'll feel that they possibly left that one out there this yep. year. But uh, no, just great to watch. Uh, we talked about it. we just talked about the fact that they you know not everyone in that team is a household name you've just summed it there's some you know future England legends in terms of you know likes of Genji past legend in terms of Coley but then you've got the future like Chesson coming up on yeah the you've got the future game. coming through so it could be could this be another legacy for, for Leicester and then you've got you've still got the ones who everyone writes off and keep mousing back yeah. we've always we've always said how good when I mean, you know we were talking about Ashley when he scored those that three was that on his debut back yeah I think it was yeah um, and he's just the best support line runner in in world rugby. I'm going to throw it out there. It's, it's ridiculous to throw it out there, but I still reckon he'd be one of the best support runners yeah. in world rugby right now. And he's got an engine and he can do it and he's got the experience. And, you know, if you can get people, it just proves that my, it's more about mindset. If people yeah. buy into what you're trying to sell, they care more and they'll, they pull it together. Andre Pollard and Anthony Watson next season as well. Why is recruitment? Yeah. 
Um, well done, Leicester Tigers. Gallagher Premiership champions in 2021-2022 and a, a fabulous stage, a fabulous return to the top. And um, I hope they celebrate hard and long into the night from here on in. Just um, time, I suppose, to have a quick reflection on the England squad as well. Just before we do that, we've got another little note from Honda on our pod this week. The official performance partner of England Rugby who, as I'm sure you know, are bringing the power of dreams to the game that we so love. They are playing a big role with the volunteers, Honda, in the English game. And they understand how English fans feel about their sport, the supporters' relationship with the team, their achievements and the hopes and those who dream the impossible dreams. Honda believes in a challenging spirit, embracing failure, which, as we've said many a time before, might well be why they enjoy working with us, and in the joy of trying things as well. And just like England Rugby and their supporters, Honda believes in the power of dreams and you can find out more at honda.co.uk forward slash engine room forward slash Honda XRFU. And that leads us nicely on from one of the England partners to England themselves. You do you didn't watch the Barbaros game, did you? I, uh, I was having a lovely Father's Day with the family. Well done. Um, so I, I saw the results. I haven't managed to uh, go back through it all. But yeah, no, it, it doesn't seem like a good day. It's at the a office. quick watch in terms of highlights if you're an England fan. I took my son Harry and seven of his mates for Harry's birthday. And at the end of it all, I said, "What were the two, you know? What did you enjoy the most?" And he said, "Trying to start a Mexican wave and the streakers." Which, if you're looking for feedback, possibly tells you but, that but there was you a little extra than the, the rugby itself. You also have to also buy into into that with the Barbars game. Is that generally what it is? Of course, uh, because it, it, you know you can't be disappointed going away with what 11, 11 tries in the game. Uh, yes, something like yes, it was eleven tries. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, you know, uh, but then always with the Bar- Barbars game, having, having played in three or four of them. You know, people are going for Mexican waves. They're yeah. going for this, so it sometimes becomes beyond what's on the pitch. But from an England point of view, going into a three-match series with Australia, they would want a better performance with that. Yes, um, for, for sure. And Eddie's well, whatever Eddie said about it, you know, his preparation going forward. That's not what you would have wanted in any shape or form. But uh, you yeah, know, there'll be changes, and obviously the thirty-six man squads now in them. I've seen one or two people just trying to compare Saturday with Sunday, and I think that's an incredibly unfair comparison when you're looking at the pinnacle of the English club game against what is the fag ash of the international game, with the greatest yeah. of respect. I mean, obviously, yeah. it's, a, it's a lot of fun and it's a good day out. Do you know one thing I did think about Sunday was that there were 40,000 there, if you're going to be generous. I don't know why they don't open up the top tier and give those tickets away. You know, like they did at Trent Bridge well, for the fifth and final day. And, and, you say, and you say you want to grow the game with a younger audience. That, yeah. That, you know, it's a no-brainer. Just, it's but a just, no-brainer. just give them away. And, yeah. and you obviously have to make sure that you've got people buying tickets. So perhaps you do, I don't know, you give them away a month before, but fill it up. Well, if you Get kids to, in who will is, never have the opportunity to is get anyone, a Is anyone going to complain if you give tickets away to kids? No. I can't see how they are. Or schools, for or example. Schools. Or junior clubs. Yeah. Or I don't uh, something. Know. Whichever to, club comes top of its local league gets yeah. 23 tickets. I don't know. I just thought. I just thought on a day in the sunshine when you've got a young England team that is trying to work its way into the into the test test arena. Why not give them as big a crowd as you can and get as many people in as possible? Who knows? England squad. Yeah, well, I, I think it's still it, it still looks like a good squad, doesn't it? I mean, at the back line, you've got plenty of exciting. You know, I'm happy for Guy Porter who's in there. Fraser Dingwall. You know, um, obviously uh, Tommy Freeman. Yeah. Yeah, there are some quality, quality players in there. You've got you've got a few apprentice players, Will Joseph, and you've got another apprentice player, Henry Arundel. I think Henry, Henry Arundel, yeah. Um, but they could quite easily. I mean, I think everyone depending. It's going to be interesting to see how Freddie approaches it. Into uh, Freddie, Eddie, <laughs> Freddie and Eddie. Freddie's, Freddie's in my brain now. Again. It's a man crush. Yeah. Uh, how Eddie approaches it. Obviously, he's going to go there to want to win, but is he going to go and play the? Australia at their own game, they all want to keep it fast and loose or is he going to try and control Australia and, and make it a bit more... How do you beat How do you beat this Australian team? Because it's worth saying they're a much, much better outfit. Yeah, they're they a miles better outfit, but they, I, I would say they still... Their strength is young, fast. Yeah. Uh, they want to play high tempo. They want to get the ball in. They want to keep it. They want chaos. So do you embrace that chaos and find out where your players are at or... or do you go back to a little bit more structured control? Um, I think I think I hope England find the balance because I don't think you can just go fully down that chaos route because it yeah. doesn't you know it doesn't really it can just lead to dis- not disaster but 
a game that doesn't really fulfill anything. Yeah. Um, like a, like the bar, like a bit like when you play the bar bars. Yeah. Um, so I would expect him to still look for that physical, the physical edge and, and set piece edge, but then give those young kids the the freedom to play when they when they want to do. And um, he's got plenty of of those with with sort of Owen Farrell <laughs> holding it all up in the uh, and Jack Noll, I suppose, in the in the in the uh, sort of in the experience stakes. It's funny because when we did a interview no, with him at Christmas, just, he said it's a young man's game, and I, it's interesting. It probably is a young man's game, and yet you look at Danny Kerr and Billy Vanapola coming back, and you still need the experience. Richard Wigglesworth it, winning it at nine for Leicester. You still need the experience. I don't think it is a young man's game. Just generously, uh, generally, it's a, it's a young man's pace. It, it, yeah, you've got you've still got to have that pace. Yeah, uh, and you've got to have, but you have to have the experience to see it. You know, you've got to have the experience to put the the young guys who can sometimes do it into into the holes or into the space that they didn't know it was there. And um, you know, I'm just I just saw Freddie Stewart's name and he's got he has got a proper good fend on him. You know, so the the little outside breaks that he makes where he le- does a good lean in. Anyone who's learning how to do a handoff, if you're a, if you're a big man, obviously you've got a long arm, which makes it easier. But getting your hips away from that as well when you're that tall, six foot four. Um, he made two two little breaks on the outside, one which he then offloaded on both on the outside. Which which just he's just I think he's getting better. Now everyone's talked about his pace, but hopefully he can is he is he out and out fast? But does he need to be out and out fast? There's a question. Anyway, that's just me. Uh that's just me sidetracking. Obviously, Johnny May got a try on the weekend. Good to see him back. Um I actually quite like it. Billy V. Get his chance back in. I think he fully he, deserved he it. Well he played Saturday, very, he? very well yeah. on Saturday. You know, um, again was pulled up in commentary for how he, you know, when he picked up off the base of the scrum, not just going full gas, actually making people think what he's going to do. Yeah. Is he going to step? And he causes a lot of problems with that. Um, and that's when he was at his best. Is when he finds himself that little bit wider and he can put that footwork on because he's got his thighs are so big he can't. I'd love to you know, know what it's going to be like and and how. Eddie Jones rebuilds those relationships with Danny Kerr, who has been out for four years, and Billy, who's had two years on the sidelines. And quite obviously, quite publicly with Danny, there was something yeah. there. I think both have said that. And with Billy, you know, he's gone from being very much the chosen one to surplus to requirement. I'd, I mean, did you go through that? Did you have an experience of that? Or did you see others who um, had to sort of fall out into the wilderness and then had to sort of bide their time and come back? It never really happened. you've to... had that long out. No. Uh, you know, Nick Easter fell out after 2011, but then got back in mm. before 2015. Um, but yeah, nothing Nothing that's probably been the length. How long has Danny been out for now? 2018, half-time of that uh, Japan so, game. So similar with, with him and Minty. But I don't... I think I, th- I think what if Eddie can learn something from his young Padawan in Borthers, yeah. it just shows if you create the right atmosphere and you create the right environment for those players and you get them invested, I think you'll get more out of them because they'll pressure you know they'll cherish every moment that they're in there. Yeah. Um. And I think that's what you know. Speaking to Danny last week, uh, sort of last week, that's what he wants. He just wants that chance. Um, yeah. And it's all about keeping that. Mo- and I think Billy will be the same. Just keep that motivation there. Mulling and musing. Eddie will, I imagine, have a fairly instrumental role in who comes in to take over post-2023, Steve Borthwick, which means Richard Wigglesworth steps up as Leicester head coach. Or he steps up. Or goes Kev, with him or, or Super to Kev, England. Or Super Kev steps in. Super Kev steps in. Um, no, I, I think it's an exciting time at the moment for England got, English coaches. There's some coaches. good coaches around, yeah. aren't there? Lee yeah, we, we had on the other day. You think about when we were going back through... Then. The Eddie Jones selection, there was like everyone was saying there was no one English. There was yeah. only Rob Baxter really thrown in there. Uh, Mal- Dean, Malander Dean, was thrown around as and well. Dean Richards. Yeah. Um, whereas now we've got this young breed of of, of coaches uh, who are all doing their thing. Um, mo- mainly all of them <laughs> from a Sarri's background. Yeah. Even the the ones that are in Ireland, apart from Catty. Yeah. So, uh, I I think it's a good uh, a good time for us. I, I think I generally believe what we've figured out is how to build an environment. Uh, that people want to play in. Now, is that the, one of the question marks over what Eddie does, the environment? And, you know, it seems to be quite player happy unless you're not in it. Yeah. If you know what I mean. So, yeah. But that's always the way, isn't it? Yeah, well, I suppose, it, I suppose it's the natural way, isn't it? Because you're always frustrated, but um, you can still have a, a good environment and not be in it. He got a really big cheer yesterday, interesting, getting off the bus, Eddie. So, which I thought was, you know, 
they have, they have made their bed and they've said this is what we're doing. So yeah, look, I'm glad he did. But okay, everyone loves to hate Eddie, and and he is an enigma that you can't make your mind up. But you know, I'm sure he, not too many years ago he was talking about how much he wanted experience. Experience was key, and now it's the young man's game, and it's not yeah. necessarily experience. And he goes through more players than than France in the the craziest of times. So. Look, it's. I think it's a game that evolves, and and he he's playing the game within that. I still think that uh, a team performs best when it, it the guy to your left and your right, you know, like the back of your hand, and that only comes from time together. Yeah. Um. So I'm I'm probably never going to move. You might call me old school on that, but I just think you need to know someone inside out if you're going to play well with them, and uh, that's the only thing I I sort of disagree with what. What Eddie does, but he's proved in the past he can get into his, uh, to a World Cup final. He's proved in the past he can beat some hemispheres teams on a regular basis. That's where he's that's where he sort of hangs his hat because he knows that he's probably going to have to be a, 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 a Southern Hemisphere team in a in a final to win one. I don't think he's named a skipper. No, he hasn't. He's not. Laws he's not, Farrell or Curry. He's not think? naming it until he picks the team. Oh, okay. Uh, is what I read somewhere. I quite like the fact he's now got three genuine options. Yeah, I would still. I would. I think the happy medium between both Farrell and uh, and Laws and uh, or see. Cool. See, one. Cool. I think, did well in the autumn. Yeah, I, I, I really like. I actually think I would stick with Courtney, uh, but it's then how you're going to play and where does Courtney fit within that? If you go, you know, if you went through it now and picked a team, who do you, you want to pick a quick team, team for the oh. for the first test? Ellis Genge, Luke Cowan, Dickey. Well, there you've got Ellis as a captain, potential, yep. couldn't you? So yep. Ellis, Luke Cowan, Dickey. Um, and then you're going to end up with Joe Hayes, are yeah. you? I'm just doing Will Stewart will probably start because yep. Sinclair's staying behind. Um, then you got Marrow and... Laws, would you go Marrow and yeah, Johnny see... Hill? Would you go Marrow, Charlie Yules? Marrow and Wait, Johnny, the last two Marrow weeks, Johnny Hill. And Ezekiel's played pretty well in the last two, well. we, two weeks. Yeah. Um, I think they'd probably go back to Johnny Hill. If we talk about how they would want to dominate, they'll want a bit of size around there. Johnny gives you that. Uh, back row, it'll be interesting to see what they do with the back row. Um, so you've got, uh, you've got Underhill, Billy, Curry, if you want to. You can have Curry at seven, Jack Willis at six. I think if you Billy will if probably you start if eight. He's only out now eight, If you haven't he? got Courtney in the second row, you have to have Courtney at six. Okay, Courtney at six. Then, Billy, Billy at eight. Billy at eight. And, uh, and then... Curry at seven. Yeah. Okay. And Curry. Nine. Do you start with Danny? Do you go... Um, Jack Van Portfleet, Harry Randall? I would say... I would say I would start with Danny. Because of the Marcus Smith at 10 factor? Yeah. Do you definitely start Marcus Smith at 10? You don't go... Yeah, but I think this this tour he will try the Marcus Smith Farrell. Owen Farrell. And therefore, who is your 13? You can have uh, well, I'm, Joe I'm, Marchant. I'm, no, I'm picking Joe Mar- Marchant before you mention anyone else. Even though like Dingwall's done very well. Um, Guy Porter's obviously done really well. I just think Joe Marchant hasn't had a run at it yet. And I think he deserves a run at it. He played well like against an elongated run of it. Well, he hasn't had no, yeah, he hasn't had back to backs on it. He played really well at thirteen against South Africa. Yeah, hit some great lines. Yeah, then he got shifted onto the wing for the yeah. Six Nations. Then dropped. Then, then dropped back. and then brought back, and he played played really well against France. Yeah, at thirteen. Yeah. So, I would like to see him actually have a. So you've got have so, a chance. So you've got Smith, Farrell, Marchand. Yep. Which, which isn't the biggest midfield, no, so therefore but again, your wings are going to be. Uh, I would, if I was going to play around with it, I'd have Nolan Cock and Asina. Okay, no Johnny May. One who's going to give you a. Oh, th- how many games is Johnny back now? Not more Not than a handful, many. I don't think. So there's going to be a little bit of protecting him. He's definitely still in there for the future. Yeah. In terms of when I say future, the World Cup plans. Yeah. Um. I think Joe Cook and Asina, you need to find out more about him, whether he is back. Uh, I think he's a very useful weapon for yep. England going forward in terms of how their midfield... He and, he, he actually had some lovely touches against the Barbars. What a great and, try. You know, you, I think he's confident and he's building up. I think he's one of those guys who needs he needs yep. games, he needs to... And he could be very useful for us, having a, a big one yep. in, the, in that back line. <clears throat> and to back that up, uh, you know, with that 
that sort of, you know, 10, 12, 13 excess, you need someone who's going to do the dirty work, and that's Jack Noel all day long. But, yeah. I mean, you could... He argue. came on at 13 yesterday, actually, did in the bar bars. <laughs> but again, he can... He can do whatever because he just wants to turn up and get the ball in his yeah. hands. He's de- he's what I would call a utility black who you stick him anywhere, he's going to do whatever he needs to do to get his hands on the ball. Yep. So it's not necessarily someone staying in their own position. Um, and then... Freddie Stewart you, at 15. Got Freddie Stewart at 15, yeah. You're not tempted to throw in Hen- Henry Arundel and just say, no, uh, not at go, the mo- you good not thing, go. At, no, not at the moment because I think, I think you're still <clears> trying to build that... You've still got to build the confidence of just dispatching these teams. So you and that, so I would go whatever you perceive as your best fifteen in their position for this first test, and then you play off the back of that, and then you know change one or two maybe between tests. But if you want to see what other people can do, and then you know if you've won two, you can trial. Don't make wholesale changes for the third, but trial a couple of others, yeah, um, and then play around with it. How are they going to get on? Look, I they've got a squad. They've got to go there to win. I think you know. We've a series win in Australia should never be sniffed at. We, I mean, I never really got to play three tests. It was always two. Mm. So you, you know, so this is a you know, a ser- have, being able to go and play a, for a series win is is great. A three a three match series, go and take it. Confidence that can be built with a World Cup round. You know, next year. I know it's still a long time out, but having their confidence of winning those games puts you in a better spot whenever you go to a World Cup. As long as you've got the same players, otherwise it means nothing. <laughs> but go take them on. I think I think they've got a good enough squad there to go and take them on physically and cause them a lot of problems, take them out of their comfort zone. But also they've got some proper flyers in there as well. Going to be a lot of fun. Certainly is not going to be boring. It never is. Well done, Tins. That is it from us for this week. Save for saying that the good, the scars and the rugby is out now. Fee Pocock, the former England winger, has dropped in for a chat with Elmer Skaz and Mo for an absolutely fascinating discussion about dealing with injury and training in the women's game. Fee's remarkable England career was plagued by a broken knee, PTSD and an ACL injury. So now she makes space for female athletes to learn about strength and conditioning and mental health through her coaching and PT business. One of the greats of the sort of rise of English rugby. And in fact, there's an unbelievable tackle. I think it was from the World Cup semi-final in 2010 that I think Fee Pocock was on the end of, actually, and did well to get up from that one. Uh, that is out now, available wherever you get your podcasts and on our YouTube channel. Let's have a little listen to the good scars and rugby. Well done, the Lord. Nice to see you. Anything exciting this week in the diary? Um, no, there's a few uh, charity things on this week. I think cherry pickers for uh, playing for the cherry pickers on Are the you weekend again? at Long 11. Is that for Dave Sims? Dave Sims, uh, yeah. Uh, uh, and Crisp, uh, Mike Crisp. Um, okay. So yeah, I think we're, I think there's quite a few trundling out uh, down at Long Elevens. Good. Um, Look after then, yourself. Uh, playing football on the Sunday if I can still walk from the Saturday. Stop it. For so, who? Uh, that's rugby for heroes. Uh, we're uh, battle of the balls. Right. So yeah, we're playing a like ex rugby team playing a ex professional football team. And, and what, fair, and what position are you playing? Left, right, out. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> last time I played pretty much that was it I was, was just that... doing like up and down the pitch yeah I like that yeah, I'm open old... coach I'm open <laughs> I'm ready no you're not no you're not sit back down yeah. uh, good luck I'll score us a screamer is someone videoing that the only screamer I'll score will go about 150 yards over right. the bar I think touchdown um, uh, I'm sure someone will video it. I'll show you some great movement as I'm getting into spaces but no one will find me right Good on you. Uh, that is it for this week's show. We are the good, the bad, and the rugby. Thank you to our partners at City Index. We are a folding pocket production. Well done to Ant D'Angelo, who's produced us this week. Never an easy job. Uh, look after yourselves. We'll see you in seven days' time. Bye for now.